years. It can be fun and scary when on Halloween night, but uh, even the spookiest ghouls and goblins need to remember to be safe. And for that reason, the Red Cross has come up with the Lucky 13, a list of 13 things that can keep children safe on Halloween. And we are joined today by the Red Cross's Jay Bonafide. So let's get right into it. I think a lot of uh, parents wonder with a question, and the question would be, when do they allow their kids to go trick-or-treating by themselves? I personally think that that's kind of a, a judgment call on your own children. If you wouldn't let your children walk to school by themselves, if you wouldn't um, trust them to go out in the front yard in the evening, you know, and just play, then you're certainly going to want to walk with them. And I would definitely err on the side of caution. I have a six-year-old and there's no chance that he's going to go out by himself, you know, on Halloween. We're going to definitely walk with him. So I, I don't think there's a hard, you know, age for that, but I would use your judgment on your children. And, and if you send them out, you have to make sure that you, you talk to them ahead of time, that they have a flashlight, that they have, you know where they're going, so you can check up on them and they're not just kind of randomly walking the streets. And once you make that hard decision, the list that you have is gonna sort of allow parents to be assured that their child will be safe. So let's get into the list. The first one I thought that we'd pick out is mapping your route. Why is it important to sort of know where your kid's gonna be at all times? Well, it's important so that you know where he or she is, you know the neighborhood that they're in, hopefully you know some of the people that that live in that area, and, and so you know it's a safe place to be, and also you can check up on them. You can go back, if it's been a little longer than you expect, or, or if you're just curious, you can check on them. You know what area they're supposed to be in, and they know what area they're supposed to be in, too. And maybe it would even be smart to like attach a time to it, say, you know, let's meet at this corner at 8.30, that way, Absolutely. if they're not there, you know where to go. Now, the one big fun thing about Halloween is it is dark, it is spooky, but you also want to make sure that you do have a flashlight. Absolutely, you're going to be out in the dark and it's just like if you're riding a bike in the dark any time of the year or anything like that or out for a walk, you want to have reflective clothing, you absolutely need to have a flashlight. So not only can you see so you don't end up bumping into something on accident, but almost more importantly so that people see you and drivers see you so that you don't end up getting yourself into an accident while you're out trying to have a good time. And there's a few more things on this list about being seen and also seeing and one of the interesting ones that I never would have thought about is not wearing a mask if you're gonna go out you know use face paint instead of that mask yeah I honestly that wouldn't have thought of that either without this list it's something the idea is that if the mask were to fall or to even shift up or just to get off then you're not gonna be able to see where you're going and if you're walking in the road or if you're walking you know even on a busy sidewalk or trying to cross the street and suddenly the mask falls that could be a problem so it's just it's an extra safety tip and you know, if trick-or-treating is a little stressful, maybe there are some parents that want a alternative that they can make sure that their kids will be safe the entire time. You guys have a great event coming up for That's that. That's right, on Saturday is our seventh annual Safe and Seen Halloween event. It's at ECC's North Campus. And what it is, is it's a indoor alternative to trick-or-treating. So we decorate the halls of ECC North. Um, we have different interactive groups. You can see the picture there. We have people, there's some outside um, interactive activities. And what you do is you not only get the candy and the traditional trick-or-treating by going to the different doors, but you also get safety tips. Um, there's the there's interactive events that are safety um, safety based, and and we also have a blood drive for the adults if they want to do that. We have um, the FBI will be there doing the uh, the child ID program, um, so you can get your kids signed up for uh, for the Safe Child program through that. So it really is it's a great event. So not only is it a great substitute, but it also is a great prep for those kids going out on Halloween. I'd like to thank you. Matt, for thank coming you. In, thank you for having me. No problem. And now we're gonna head over to our Kitchen World Kitchen to see what.